Hello and welcome to another edition of Feel This Pain. I'm Ken McKim and today we're going to be talking again about fibromyalgia. Now in my last fibro video, I was really concentrating on trying to convey the amount of pain that people with this disease are in. Today we're going to be talking about something called fibro fog and while it's a sort of funny sounding name, it's a symptom that is very distressing for those who have to deal with it every day of their lives, which people with fibromyalgia have to. And we're not just talking about occasionally forgetting a word. The people who experience this, it's very scary. Think about not being able to trust your brain to recall vital information, or not being able to trust that the right words are gonna come out of your mouth when you're trying to communicate with other people. What might that look like, you ask? Well, maybe something like this. Things like breakfast seem simple enough, and usually they are, except with fibro fog, not everything always goes according to plan. Yeah. Air freshener. Very nice. Smells great, except when it's not air freshener. These kinds of mistakes can be expensive and lead to uncomfortable conversations with your spouse or significant other. Hey, honey. Yeah? I was feeling a little bit better this morning, so I was thinking I was going to go to the to get some food from the place. McDonald's? No, the other one. Subway? No, the the place with the food. Wendy's? Burger King? Taco Bell? No, no, it's the place with the food, but it also has a toilet plunger and fertilizer. Arby's? Maybe, but no, that's wrong. It's the where we got curtains last week. Oh, Walmart. Yes. I'm gonna go to Walmart later because I feel a little better today. Nothing is simple anymore. Would you like to take the grocery list with you? Well, that would be novel. Why don't we do that? Yes, fibro fog can make you feel more alone than you ever thought possible. You lost? Uh, yeah. And it's not just that. I mean, I've read stories of people who grabbed the uh, hairspray and used it as deodorant. And sure, doing something like that occasionally would be kind of funny. But for people with fibromyalgia, fibrofog is not an occasional symptom. And I don't know if you can imagine the helplessness that you would feel not being able to trust your ability to, to think clearly. To recall information. I mean, imagine if you were at a hospital and you're trying to fill out a form so that you can see a doctor and you suddenly look at a word and it loses all meaning for you, like social security number. Not just not being able to remember your social security number, but not being sure what a social security number even is. There are so many situations in our daily lives where the ability to accurately recall important information is vital to functioning in society. And people with chronic illnesses like fibro already feel marginalized. They already feel overly dependent on their friends and their family. And it's humiliating for them. It's just devastating to have to depend on other people that heavily. And so again, if you know anyone who suffers from fibromyalgia or any other chronic illness, stop yourself from trying to be helpful and suggesting all the things that they could do better, aren't doing enough of, or really need to try. You're just making them feel worse. You're making them feel like they're not trying hard enough. What people with chronic illnesses need above all else is compassion from you and from everyone around them. And that's all we're going to have time for in this edition. As always, if you'd like to learn more about society's shoddy treatment of the chronically ill, you can watch my video right here on this YouTube channel, The Slow Death of Compassion for the Chronically Ill. You can also send me your questions to ken at don'tpunishpain.com. You can go to that website to keep up with me on my blog. You can also follow me over on Twitter, at don'tpunishpain. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.